who built St. Augustine. When I visited St. Augustine, Florida in 2022, my first reaction was surprise. The architecture was unlike anything I'd seen elsewhere, much less Florida. The buildings are said to have been built by Henry Flagler, an executive at Standard Oil, now Shell Oil, close friend and business partner of John D. Rockefeller. Originally built as hotels, they were allegedly completed within just one year, in 1888. The structure in the front of this photo was once called Alcazar Hotel, and the one in the back Ponce de Leon Hotel. The block on the right was called Cordova Hotel. Flegler built three massive hotels beside each other, within only one year. He must have been expecting a lot of guests. Alcazar and Ponce were designed by architects Hastings and Carr. The Cordova Hotel was designed by Franklin Smith. Franklin Smith was the person who inspired Flegler to invest in St. Augustine. At least, that's the official story. This image is one of the Alcazar Towers with a lion's head. The photo was taken in 1891. The lion motif is found throughout the city, for instance Lions Bridge, built sometime after the Flagler era, in 1927. This image is the roof of the Alcazar Hotel. While stunning to look at, there's something distinctly un-American about this architecture. Is this really how the cowboys of the 1800s would design their hotels? The Flagler Museum agrees the hotels were built and opened in 1888. The Alcazar Hotel today is called Leitner Museum. What kind of technology was used to erect so many places at such fantastic speed? Modern construction companies take longer for projects of similar size. Where did they get the workforce to build so quickly? According to the census, the population of St. Augustine in the 1880s was approximately 2200 people. If we exclude women, we're left at 1100. Take away old men and boys, it leaves us with 500 men who could potentially have constructed the buildings. That's assuming that none of them were not already busy with other jobs. A more realistic assumption is that of the 500 able-bodied men, 50 might work in construction or be looking for employment, an optimistic guess. Neither 50 nor even 500 would have been enough for all the places Flegler is said to have built. Where did Flegler get his workforce? How many were involved? Records that show how all this was made were not readily available at the time of this video. Almost everything we know about St. Augustine is informed and influenced by Rockefeller associate and Standard Oil executive Henry Flagler. Unfortunately, the Rockefellers and their associates aren't the most reliable sources of information. John Rockefeller was the richest man alive at the time. There are dozens of books that have documented the shady and criminal business practices of Standard Oil. John Rockefeller is also known as the father of the pharmaceutical industry. John's father was a known con man. This is what History.com says about John's father, William Rockefeller. William's money had come from a slew of shady business ventures, from pretending to be a deaf and blind peddler, to posing as a doctor to hawk patent medicines. Suspected of horse stealing and even indicted for rape in 1849, William had been an unstable father figure. For years, he had lived under assumed names and was known as Dr. Levingston before his death. He had a big jug of medicine, and he treated all diseases from the same jug, an associate recalled, remembering that the supposed doctor would laugh about his concoction, magically being able to cure anyone willing to give him money. Despite attempts by the family to distance themselves from their father, the Rockefellers had known their father's location for years and had been sending him money. John D. Rockefeller spent a lot of money to brush up the public image of the family and pretend he had nothing to do with his father. Even so, many of his criminal activities came to light. For example in 1911, the Supreme Court found that Standard Oil was in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act, an illegal monopoly, and ordered it broken into 34 separate companies. Standard Oil under both Flegler and Rockefeller also bribed politicians, illegally spied on competitors and politicians, secured illegal railroad discounts, blocked competitors from using railroad lines and other resources, and more. Today when I walk through St. Augustine, I see Henry Flegler's name on street signs, murals, statues, in churches, colleges, everywhere. In his day he had been exposed as a ruthless criminal, but over time, they managed to turn him into the man who built Florida, a heroic figure we owe the whole state to. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. 
Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The star fort on your screen is called Castillo San Marcos, the castle of Saint Mark. This most prominent feature of Saint Augustine is said to have been built by the first Spanish settlers between 1672 and 1695. While visiting, I saw they had placed brand new cannons on the upper platform and also around the fort. The interior rooms were decorated with beds and clothing of what Spanish soldiers' barracks would have looked like in those days. The cannons, cannonballs, bunk beds, flags and clothing were all added to the structure to build a narrative that the star fort was built by Spanish soldiers. I asked a tour guide if these things had been found at the fort, he told me they hadn't and that it's part of the staging. They also do reenactments there, where cosplayers dress as Spanish soldiers. Notice the size of humans beside this massive structure. Star forts, we find them worldwide, in the desert of Australia, in the Pacific, in Russia, in Persia, in Arabia, in Indonesia, in Europe, in Africa. They were part of a long-forgotten culture that replicated its design on all continents. We have to ask whether it was really the Spanish soldiers that built the structure. I'm not saying they weren't capable of building it, but they just as well may have already found it there upon their arrival. They may very well have placed cannons there and slept there in bunk beds. But did they actually construct it? And if so, why didn't they construct anything of similar size? The walls of the star fort are packed with seashells. That's perhaps not surprising. Most castles and forts had water surrounding them for protection. There's a drawbridge leading to the castle, meaning it was built to be surrounded by water. But. I found that the higher walls, and even towers, also had petrified seashells packed into the stone. The whole place must have been underwater long enough to get seashells stuck to it. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part 2. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.